All right, unit two, lesson 10, practicing proofs. So our learning goal is let's practice what we've learned about proofs and congruence. So we're definitely gonna be looking at things in terms of triangles, right? Uh, and we will be using triangle congruencies. So practicing proofs. So the first one, first proof, is proving that ABCD is a parallelogram. Um, as you can see to the right of the image, they have already given us some information. They've given us that DC is parallel to AB. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and list that. So here's my givens. So CD is parallel to uh, AB. Okay, and what else did they give us? They gave us some lengths, like DA is congruent to uh, BC or AD. So let's see, AD. Is congruent to BC. They also gave us some other sides here. DE is congruent to PE. See, AE is congruent to CE. Okay, so as you can see, they already gave us a lot from the picture. Now I'm going to be using what they gave us uh, to figure out how we can prove that a parallelogram uh, is what we're dealing with here. Now, what do we know about parallelograms? Okay, uh, what do we know about parallelograms? So the definition of a parallelogram is something I'm keeping in my mind right now. So let's see, definition. All right, and if you want, you can even just stick to the picture, right? You have, you know, something going on like this, all right? And the main features here that we need is that the opposite sides are congruent to one another, right? Um, the opposite sides also have to be parallel, okay, to one another. And we're going to have to prove those ideas. So let me clean this up a bit. This side is congruent to that side, and this side is parallel to this side. So we need that at least. All right. Um, we already have the parallel being shown here. We already have these opposite sides being congruent to each other. Uh, so it's kind of nice that we already have half of what we need to show given to us. So let's start with the proof. Um, how many triangles do you see here in the original image? Okay. Hopefully you see four triangles, correct? Now, can we use that idea uh, to prove things? Well, we need to prove what? We need to prove AB is congruent to CD. We need to prove that, let's see, AD is parallel to BC. So we need to prove a lot right there. Is there anything else? I think it's uh, fair to say that we also need to prove, no, we got DC, we got AB, we, yeah. Okay, so this is these are the two things that we need to prove in order to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. So how do we do that? So 
AB is congruent to CD. That's the first thing we need to really prove, right? Um, how can we do that? Well, does everybody agree that, let's see, the first part of this proof here, let's use purple. Um, actually, let's just circle it in purple. There we go. So the first part here that we need to prove is going to be involving this triangle here versus this triangle up here, right? Because it's involving A, B, and C, D. So we're going to be using those two triangles. Now, what do we have here? We have a pair of sides, right? Um, do we have anything else? Do we have angles at all? Like we have, so let's break this down. This side is congruent to this side, right? This side is congruent to this side. For these two triangles, the one on top and the one on bottom, is there anything else that we know have to be congruent? Just look at it. Is there, a, we don't have another side. Do we have an angle? And hopefully you now realized, yeah, we have an angle. Why are these two angles congruent? And hopefully you realize those are vertical angles. So that is going to help us out. So these two triangles are congruent by what? Triangle congruency theorem. All right. So we have this side being congruent to that angle. I'm sorry. This side to that side. And then angle to that angle. And then angle to this side. All right. So side, angle, side. All right, so let's go ahead and write that in our proof. Okay, we finally figured out the, the, the visual part of this. So let's get the, uh, the first thing given here. So first things first, it's polite to go ahead and say what's given for your first uh, step here. It's pretty important. Let me see if I can uh, shrink it. There we go. That's ooh, that that worked out nice. I can trick it pretty well. All right. Now, second thing is what we need to prove that AB is congruent to CD. Well, we notice that angle AEB is congruent to angle, and again, angle AEB. Let me highlight that in. I don't know, gray, angle AEB, is this angle right down, down there, right? Is congruent to angle CED, which is right here. Why? Because they're vertical angles. We said that. And so since they are vertical angles. Okay. All right. So number three, we now know, right? Because what was it? We had the side given right here, right? We had a pair of sides given from the fact that AE is congruent to CE. We have the fact that uh, DE is congruent to B, which gives us the other pair of sides. And then we got that angle from the vertical angles, right? So we could finally say those two triangles, the triangle AEB is congruent to triangle uh, CED um, since or by the side angle side triangle congruence. Okay. Now, because these two triangles are congruent, what can we finally say about AB, right, to CD? That they're congruent, right? How do we know that these two side lengths are congruent? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? If triangle AEB is congruent to triangle CED, 
all their corresponding parts to each other are going to be congruent as well. That's including A, B, and C, D. All right, so we finally got that part done. Now we need to prove. Now we need to prove this other part. We need to prove AD is parallel to BC. Okay, so how can we do that? Can we see? We already know that DC, right, is parallel to AB. So does everybody agree that that means this angle right here is going to be congruent to this angle right here and because of alternate interior angles okay so what do we need to prove in order to get da uh, to be congruent or i'm sorry parallel with cb or bc so ad is parallel to bc so how do we get that so let's look if let's look at their alternate interior angles so we need to know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. Okay, we need to know if those alternate interior angles will work. So what two triangles does that involve themselves with? The left triangle and the right triangle, right? It involves this triangle here versus this triangle right here. Okay, so we're actually going to have to prove that we have uh, two congruent triangles. So we can prove that those two angles are the same. And then AD is congruent to BC because of alternate interior angles. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. That sounds like a lot and you're running out of room. True, very, very true. In fact, I'm probably gonna have to make some room here. So I'll probably fly up the page or maybe just Copy and paste, or there, I can move things up. All right, there we go. That won't hurt much. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> oh. Uh. That goes to that, right? There we go. And that was going to that. Okay. So continuing on for the rest of the proof. And yes, it's pretty lengthy, isn't it? But I'm being very thorough here. All right. <clears throat> so we got to prove those two angles the same. We have to prove those two triangles are congruent first, right? Because <clears throat> then all their parts are going to be congruent. <clears throat> so let's do this. <clears throat> we got triangle... Well, first things first, we still have those sides, right? We still have sides, right? Do we have angles still? Do we have vertical angles? We do. This angle here and this angle here, right? Are congruent. I'll use brown. There we go. All right, those are vertical angles. So, uh, angle AED has to be congruent to angle uh, BEC, right? Since those are sense or vertical angles. Okay, six. We already know that those two sides are congruent. <clears throat> so we could finally say triangle AED is going to be congruent to triangle B E C oops B C E B E C All right and that's by side angle side triangle congruence Okay And let's see here <clears throat> That means angle A D E is congruent to the other angle angle Let's see, C, B, E, right, which are the blue ones that I highlighted right here, okay, <clears throat> and that's by C, P, C, T, C, 
right? Since there are two triangles that are congruent to each other, so their parts have to be the same, or their corresponding parts, right, have to be the same. Um, <clears throat> okay. Eight, we can finally say AD is parallel to BC, okay? And then you could say since... Um, uh, step seven, which are alternate interior angles. All right. All right. So we proved that those two sides are congruent to each other, the opposite sides. We also proved <clears throat> that these two line segments are parallel, thus satisfying the idea or definition of a parallelogram. So we could finally say at the very end of this lengthy proof, that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Right, and that is because step, uh, hold on, step uh, four and step uh, eight. Okay, and that satisfies the definition that we were going for, right? Okay, so that's a lot, but you know what? I think it's uh, pretty healthy to see each little intricate part and how I proceed with my proof. All right, so go ahead and try this one, all right? Practicing the proofs. So what can we conclude about diagonal YW? Ooh, we've talked about that, right? So how are you going to prove that these two triangles are congruent, right? They give you sides, right? So what triangle congruency, right? So hopefully you said side, 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 triangle congruency, right? Um, why can he now conclude that the diagonal YW bisects angles ZYX and ZY? Uh, or ZWX and ZYX. So let's mark those. ZWX. Uh, All right, so they're basically asking, right, if this kid knows that these two triangles are uh, congruent to one another because of side, 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 how do we know that this angle here has to be the same angle here and this angle here has to be the same angle here? Why? And if you look up here, you'll see how I explained that. All right, you have two uh, congruent triangles. What do you know about all their parts? Okay, so what's the reason behind knowing that these angles in respects to one another are congruent to each other? All right, so that's for you to explain. All right, practicing proofs. Let's see here. We have two triangles. They say it's a kite has a measure of 133 degrees. So, oh, angle WXY, that makes sense. Angle WXY, which is right here, has 133 degrees. Angle ZYX, ZYX, this angle here, which is including those two triangles, or two angles, by the way. So the total there, is 34 degrees. Now they're asking find the angle measure of Z Y uh, Z W Y. So we need to find that. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and think. If these two triangles uh, happen to be congruent to each other, which they are, right? You have side, side, you know, side, side, right? Reflexive property there. Side, side. So we definitely know that these three triangles are congruent to each other, okay? Now that we know that they're congruent to each other, we know that their corresponding parts are the same, meaning that this angle here is definitely half of 34, right, for the left triangle. So what's half of 34? 17, right, degrees. That means this angle here is 17 degrees. If this angle here is 133, that means this angle here is also 133 degrees, okay? Because CPCTC. Now, <clears throat> we know that for your angles here, we need uh, the 17 degrees, 
plus the 133 degrees plus the angle that we're looking for, W. Uh, uh, actually, what are we trying to find? Z, Y, W. Sorry, Z, Y. No, Z, W, Y. There we go. Equals 180. Okay. You guys go ahead and finish up the, uh, the math here. And what do you get for your angle measurement? And that's going to be your answer. Okay, so do you notice how you used the idea of congruency real quick? The idea of CPCTC, <clears throat> right? And, uh, you know, like angle bisector right there, right? Cuts the angle, total angle in half. So that very, very interesting idea is being applied uh, to finding the missing piece. All right, error analysis. All right, so this kid here is uh, writing a proof to show that these two triangles are congruent to one another. Uh, they say it's not correct. Why? Okay, so what's given? Segment, so this is the given part. They do give us some information. They say segment EG is an angle bisector of FGH. All right, FGH, FGH. So that means that angle is going to be congruent to that angle. Okay. Um, Noah wrote his proof. Okay, for triangle HEG, which is the left triangle. Okay. Uh, it says Noah's proof is incorrect. Why is Noah's proof incorrect? Let's see. Uh, he says side EG is congruent to EG because they're the same segment. That, that's true, right? That's the reflexive property. All right. So he's saying that side <clears throat> is itself, right? Um, what do we got here? Angle HEG is congruent to angle EGF. So let's see. EG. Uh, H, which is this angle here, is congruent to EGF uh, because EG is an angle bisector. That is also true. So he's doing good so far. Then he says angle HEG is congruent to FEG because segment EG is an angle bisector of angle FGH. Uh, so I think he's talking about these angles here being congruent to each other because you have the angle bisector for those two angles, right? That's his logic. He's like, if that if EG cuts that angle in half, then it should cut this angle up here in half, right? Um, so is that true? Can he make that statement? Or is that an assumption? What do you think? Did they give us the idea that these two angles were congruent to each other? All right, and he's definitely using angle, side angle, triangle congruency. So, you know, he's using this angle to that angle, uh, this side to this side. But can he assume that these two angles are congruent to each other? Can he? So go ahead and explain real quick in your own words uh, if if he is allowed to assume that those other pair of angles are congruent to each other. Okay, so in summary, we definitely uh, have to figure out um, if you know we're looking at the triangles right that make up the shape. And we, can we prove that the triangles are congruent? Okay. Um, if they are congruent, right, we would know things about their segments and angles uh, that are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, which is really just a fancy way of saying CPCTC, right? Uh, we use the reflexive property, and we try to use, uh, if, if there's enough information, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, triangle congruence. All right, everybody have a beautiful day.